Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are hydrates of carbon and they contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Majority of carbohydrates are having the empirical formula CN, H2, N, O, N. In biochemistry, carbohydrates are denoted as saccharides. It is derived from a Greek word saccharo, which means sugar. These carbohydrates are defined chemically as aldehyde or ketone derivatives of the higher polyhydric alcohols or the compounds which yield these derivatives on hydrolysis. Carbohydrates are defined chemically as aldehyde or ketone derivatives of the higher polyhydric alcohols or compounds which yield these derivatives on hydrolysis. Coming to the classification of carbohydrates, based on the number of monomer units or the uh, sugar units present and the degree of their polymerization, Carbohydrates are classified into four main groups. Monosaccharides, then disaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. This classification is based on the number of monomer units and the degree of their polymerization. So coming to first group that is monosaccharides, these are also called as simple sugars. These are simple sugars which cannot be hydrolyzed further into simpler forms. These monosaccharides exist as colorless, crystalline and water soluble, water -soluble solids. Depending upon the number of carbon atoms, these are subdivided into, subdivision is uh, based on, depending upon the number of carbon atoms and depend on the functional groups. So, depending upon the number of carbon atoms, depending on the number of carbon atoms, they are subdivided into trioses, means 3 carbon. Tetroses means 4 carbon, then pentoses 5 carbon, hexoses 6 carbon, etc. This is based on the number of carbon atoms. Then, depending on the functional groups, whether aldehyde, functional group means whether aldehyde or ketone groups is present. They are subdivided into aldoses and ketoses or ketoses. So, coming to aldoses and ketoses, this trioses, for example, glyceraldehyde. Glyceraldehyde, here it is dihydroxyacetone. Then, tetroses, erythrose, here it is erythrulose. Then pentoses, ribose, and ribulose. Then glucose, here it is fructose. This is based on the functional groups, whether aldehyde or ketone groups are present. These monosaccharides are subdivided into aldoses or aldosugars, ketoses or ketosugars. For example, glyceraldehyde, dihydroxyacetone, erythrose, erythrulose, ribose, ribulose and hexoses include glucose and fructose. So, this is about monosaccharides. Second classification is disaccharides. Disaccharides. Disaccharides are composed of two sugar units. They contain two covalently linked monosaccharide units. This 
individual monosaccharide units in a, in a disaccharide are called, called as residues. This, uh, disaccharides are soluble in water. These monosaccharide units are linked through glycosidic linkage or glycosidic bond. Some disaccharides are reducing sugars and some are non-reducing sugars. Reducing and non-reducing. If the anomeric carbon atom of both the monosaccharides, this uh, disaccharides contain two monosaccharides. So, if the anomeric carbon atom of both the monosaccharide residues is involved in the glycosidic bond formation, then the disaccharides are unable to reduce the ferric or cupric ions. So, they will be non-reducing sugars. If the anomeric carbon atom of both the monosaccharides, mono monosaccharides, if the anomeric carbon atom of both the monosaccharides are involved in the glycosidic bond formation, then the disaccharides are unable to reduce the ferric or cupric ions. So, they will be non-reducing sugars. So, they will be non-reducing sugars. For example, sucrose, trehalose. Coming to sucrose, it is composed of glucose and fructose and linked together by alpha 1 beta 2 linkage. Sucrose is table sugar or cane sugar and it will not form osseous ones and it will, will not exhibit muta rotation. As it is a non-reducing sugar, it will, it will not form osseous So, that is non-reducing. Reducing means if at least one anomeric carbon is free in a disaccharide, it can reduce the ferric or cupric ions. If one anomeric carbon is free, then it can reduce the ferric or cupric ions. So, they will be reducing sugars. For example, reducing sugars, for example, lactose, maltose, cellobiose, etc. Lactose, maltose, cellobiose. Lactose, it is milk sugar. It contains glucose and galactose. Glucose and galactose connected by beta 1,4 linkage. Beta 1,4 linkage. Coming to maltose, maltose is malt sugar. Or maltobiose. Maltose is a disaccharide of two glucose residues. That is glucose plus glucose. It is held together by alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. As these uh, lactose and maltose, these have reducing properties, they can form osseous zones. Maltose form Sunflower, sunflower shape osseous crystals and lactose form powder puff appearance or hedgehog shape. Hedgehog shape or powder puff appearance. So, these have reducing properties. These have reducing properties, lactose and maltose. So, they can form osseous crystals. So, that is about disaccharides, non-reducing and reducing sugars. Then coming to next one, that is oligosaccharides. Third one is oligosaccharides. This contain 3 to 10 sugar units. For example, raffinose. It contain, it is a trisaccharide. Trisaccharide of galactose, glucose, fructose. Raffinose is a trisaccharide of galactose, glucose and fructose. Another example is maltotriose. These are oligosaccharides. It contains 3 to 10 sugar units. Next one is polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are complex sugar po 
world was with more than 10 monomer units or monosaccharide units. These are further divided into two groups, homopolysaccharide and heteropolysaccharide. Homo and heteropolysaccharide. This contain more than 10 monosaccharide units. Coming to monopolysaccharides, these are polymer of same monosaccharide units. Same monosaccharide units. Heteropolysaccharides are polymers of different monosaccharide units or their derivatives. Different monosaccharide units or their derivatives. Here examples are starch, glycogen, inulin, cellulose, etc. Starch is a polymer of glucose. It consists of two polymeric units of glucose called amylose and amylopectin. Amylose and amylopectin. Amylose, it is held together by or the, here the glucose units are linked by alpha 1,4 linkage. Amylopectin contains alpha 1,4 and alpha 1,6. Alpha 1,6 is the branching point. Linkages. In coming to glycogen, it is animal starch. The starch is present in plants. Glycogen, it is animal starch. Glycogen is also polymer of D-glucose units. It contains it is linked together by alpha 1,4 and alpha 1,6 linkages. Then inulin, it is a polymer of D fructose. Then cellulose, it is made up of two molecules of D glucose by beta 1,4 linkage. That is homopolysaccharides. Coming to heteropolysaccharides, polysaccharides are divided into homo and heteropolysaccharides. Let us see heteropolysaccharides. Heteropolysaccharides are polymers of different monosaccharide units or their derivatives. These are also called glycosaminoglycans. Or mucopolysaccharides. Glycosaminoglycans or mucopolysaccharides. For example, hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate, heparin, keratin sulfate, dermatin sulfate, etc. This hyaluronic acid, it is present in joints. And it acts as a lubricant. It acts as a lubricant and a shock absorber. It acts as a lubricant and, a, and as a shock absorbent. Then this dermatin sulfate, it is present in sclera of eye. Then keratin sulfate, it is present in cornea of eye. Then chondroitin sulfate, it has a role in compressibility of in the cartilages. And heparin, heparin, it is anticoagulant. So these are heteropolysaccharides. So this is about carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are hydrates of carbon and they contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And they define chemically as aldehyde or ketone derivatives of the higher polyhydric alcohols or compounds which yield these derivatives on hydrolysis. So this is today's topic. Thank you for watching.